Hey After Buzzers, you're watching the After Buzz show for Containment Season 1, Episode 4 with Silence and Tears. We've got a very special guest in studio with us tonight, so stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. You can't go wrong with a good Backstreet Boys song, right? You cannot go wrong. <laughs> I'll just let it with Backstreet Boys. Boys. <laughs> You're your fan, you know? Yeah, you don't want to I don't, don't want to lose uh, you. <laughs> so, <laughs> right off the bat. You can't lose an audience with Backstreet yeah. Boys. Um, that's true. That's very I true. I love it. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Tiana Hobson. You can find me on Twitter at the Tiana Hobson. And joining me tonight, we've got Yvette Sanchez. Hello, everyone. New to the panel. She'll be I joining us. I was in us. containment. <laughs> you were all like, you know, oh. <laughs> We had to keep her contained for 48 hours, and now she's back. I and, am. <laughs> and you can find me at Sports and Sass on Twitter with three S's. Oh, Sports oh. and Sass. Sass. I love it. <laughs> um, and then we've also got Gabriel Gonzalez sitting what's, across the table. What's up, guys? As always, you can find me on Twitter at Double G on TV. And tonight, our very special guest, who actually chose the opening <laughs> song tonight, which yeah. makes me yes, I love him even more than I already do, oh, George I, Young. I, hello there. Hello, everyone. <laughs> yes, Backstreet Boys are awesome. I am the. I want to be the extra member of Backstreet Boys. <gasps> if they ever tour again, I mean, I'm there. They have to right spot. Now. What are we doing here? Let's go. <laughs> no, let's go. Let's Bye, go. everyone. Bye. Bye. We're the yeah, short yeah, show. Sure. 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 Tune you. in next week. We'll find out who made it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And, if, and for those of you guys who don't recognize that accent, if you're listening to us on iTunes right now, um, George plays Dr. Canitz on the show, who yeah. I'm still trying to nail down if I trust or not, but... I trust George, so... Trust me, thank you. You know, After uh, that song choice. I'm just glad me. to have another gentleman here on the panel. Exactly. You know, I have to hear all the girls gush about you <laughs> and <laughs> Officer Jake, so it's nice to have you here. Smooth. It's, nice to, also, much. Much. it's nice to have a basketball guy, too. So, uh -huh. real quick... You told me you're a Bulls fan. Yeah. The 72 10 season, we had the Warriors 73 9. Which team is better, real quick, man? If the Bulls, if the 90s Bulls had to play the Warriors now. Wait, who is it? It's got to be the Bulls for me. Oh, <laughs> oh all right, all right. All right. right. That, that'll, be another, that'll be another after show, but I got to well, ask you, it's great to have you here, thank man. Thank you very for much, real. Thank, thank you for you. coming. Thank you. Yeah, all right. So let's get into tonight's episode. I want to start with what's happening outside of the cordon. Um, we've got Leo and Lex, who those two, I feel like they just really need to find a way to get along yeah. with each other instead of constantly fighting all the time. Um, but Lex has been, you know, giving the public the government-approved speeches. Staying on message. Yes, staying on message. And Leo keeps challenging him to, you know, ask more questions and really tell the truth about what's going on out there is leo crossing a line here do you guys feel or um i don't think so because i think you know he's just he wants to get everything out there but i understand lex to a certain extent just because when you give too much information it goes into like a state of panic and chaos and all that mm -hmm. so we already see that now. You can only imagine if they're like, hey, guys, this is not something we're going to live with for, like, three days. This is going to be something you're going to live with for, like, years or, you know, something like that. So it, I can see him wanting the answers and wanting to give the answers, but I can see why he's not doing it. But I can also see why it's eating him up inside, which is why there's always conflict between mm -hmm. him and Leo. Uh, you know what? When I look at that conflict, I really stand with Lex because, you know what, he is trying to do the best he can in a really difficult situation. When it comes to Leo, what I find is that he's, yeah, he's saying, I'm here for the answers, I'm here for the truth. Man, you're just instigating that whole situation every time he, he's, when he pokes at Lex, he doesn't poke at him, he doesn't speak to his humanity, he's speaking to his own agenda. And that's the reason why I don't feel like that conflict is going to resolve itself unless they're both, you know, have their necks on the line personally, not just, hey, I'll scratch your back, you'll scratch mine. 
I love hearing everyone's theories, <laughs> and I have to make sure I kind of raise <laughs> everything in the future. But I've been watching your show. I've been watching oh. the past few episodes. I know people. You know, some people say things about Claudia Black's character. I remember in the yeah. first episode, Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> you Claudia, know. can you listen? I hope Claudia's listening. Gabriel wanted your character. You were to get infected right from the start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Claudia, Claudia Black, are you listening? I hope you're I'm listening. Gonna, you know, we're going to have a discussion about Sabine Lombard. Uh, Claudia, will, I'd like will. you to know that, yes, I do do want you to get infected, but it's only Still, because... Not it, Claudia herself. It's only because you play such an evil character so well. There you go. Let's make it all clear. You, you know, you, I hope now. you win an Emmy, <laughs> but I hope your character doesn't make it to the season finale. It's oh, all good. No. Oh, shots fired on wow. that. Wow. I, I hope Claudia comes real, on real the show. Quick, I hope you make it, okay? Thank you very just much. Just make sure. Yeah, so smooth, just, so smooth. Is he going to say that next time when she's here? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I hope I just you make it. Everyone, everyone to know everyone. that Tiana had nothing to do with this. Oh. This side of the table over here, the girls are uh -uh. not saying that about For the first time, we're staying neutral and not giving our opinion. <laughs> you know that, uh, you we're just keeping uh, our mouth shut on that one. Then you guys stay that four to six feet away from me. Uh, I'll stand it's by too late it. now. We're way too close <laughs> to each other. We're, we're, we're going to share each other's water. Every, everyone's what's, like playing footsies down here. But you guys I, just can't see it. What's funny, you know the truth. You know what, I know how it all I, ends. I, I, all I, all, I've erased everything apart from what we just watched. So okay. every, I'm on episode really? four right now. And so I, interesting your theories about Leo and his own agenda. And I do agree that he's he's prodding, especially the beginning of the episode. Well, throughout, really, you yeah. see him. He's prodding Lex to, to get off message pretty much but right. but do you still feel you feel that way at the, you see feel that way at the beginning of the episode that he's got his own agenda do, do you feel it evolves later on in the episode I mean we, we don't, we'll probably explore that yeah. as we talk and but. I think that he does evolve and in every episode so far mm. Leo you know he starts off kind of one way where I'm like oh Leo just leave Lex alone give him a break he's just trying to do his job and then by the end of it you're kind of seeing um, what are Leo in a different light? And you're like, oh man, I do kind of feel bad for him. He just wants mm -hmm. answers. Yeah. But he's not the only one who wants answers and not everyone has the accessibility to just keep walking into the police station and talking to the man in charge. Right. So I think that's another reason why he's pushing it so much because he is the only one that has, you know, that, let's say, jurisdiction or whatever yeah. to actually get in there and do what he has to do to get answers for everybody else. So yeah, I think that's more reason why he's trying to push it and push it and push it. And he knows that although Lex has a very hard exterior, he's got a very soft interior. 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 Yeah. <laughs> no, don't, don't we all? Don't we all? <laughs> right? don't we all? You know, yeah, to finish I that point. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the only point I was going to make is that we talked about it in our first episode that Julie Plank wants to explore what really happens to humans and people in general just when they're in these situations. And one of the themes we really explore is selfishness. I mean, you know, Lex, is it about the people or is it about the love of his life? For Leo, is it about, you know, the truth? Is it about his friends? And we explore these lines with all the characters, and I think that's one of the things we're really starting to see now as the situation escalates. Mm -hmm. Well, I think in all situations like that, regardless, everyone might have, like, the common, like, oh, let's a team, but everyone's got their own selfish oh, agenda. agenda. And you, you, see, know. you see that coming up. As you see, in, as well as Julie exploring relationships, as well as the writer, you know, Michael Jones Morales, who wrote this, um, this episode, but all the writers and, and Julie, they're exploring not only the relationships, but what happens when you take things away. So we start this episode with the continuing the blackout. The end of right. episode three was, you know, they mm -hmm. cut off communications, except yes. that gets his own special <laughs> Special thing. line. Thanks, Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but you start stripping away these things, so the internet and your phones, and people start fighting, like you were saying, people yeah. start fighting over resources within right. it and you start seeing it later mm -hmm. in the episode I, d I, I see what we, are we exploring each m sort of section of the episode so I don't yeah. want to say too yeah. much about you can, we yeah. mix and mingle all oh, the yeah, time you see, you see it you know the resources in the shop mm -hmm. at, in the store you start seeing another gang coming in and yeah. seeing what's going on there you see the phone Jana so you know she's so, so smart. smart I thought Canna's was a smart one didn't they you know Christina Moses' character Jana constructing this phone and people fighting over the phone Dennis going I, I've got kids, mm -hmm. I should talk first. But 
everyone's buying other resources, and we're, which we take for granted. Everyone, we're right. watching yeah. live streaming on our phones all the time. All you know, time. It, that was one of the things that when we touched upon last week, just that complete blackout. When you really think about it, you know, in our day and age, that really is like cutting the power just. Oh, yeah. And in this situation, you know, but I feel like they explored it very well in that, you know, what do we see? How do people adapt to that kind of situation? And we see quite frankly some people they're pushed even farther apart to the extreme and others they realize they have to stick together even if they don't know each other necessarily yeah right. i mean earlier today i was charging my phone i put it in the plug <laughs> across the room for me i was like one hour just be away from your phone it was the longest hour of my life i was sitting there i was like i don't know what to do during commercial breaks of this show like what <laughs> a, i'm supposed to check my phone i don't know how i would live without constantly checking my phone for the most stupid things and like a cat video on YouTube or and something. And you only notice it when it's gone. Yes. And like you did, That's like you're true. charging right. for an hour and you realize it. It's true. We don't We, we don't, don't realize, realize how dependent yeah. we are. Um, I mean, another thing that's happening outside of the um, cordon is Xander is trying to get over into yeah. <laughs> the cordon, which, I mean, you'd think most people would be trying to get out of the right, place where all the right. sick people are. And here's Xander trying to jump in. And you have Lex who's faced with one of his biggest decisions yet because or in earlier episodes, he's able to stop people without him firing the shot. Yeah, having any excessive force. Yes, already. and this time, you know, Xander's not going to stop. He's a determined young man, and he fires the shot. I mean, thank goodness it was just a bing bag, but that's still got to hurt. Yeah, right? Fire a bing bag from a shot. It took a bullet for me. I mean, not a bullet, but a bing bag, but still, it was romantic. But um, <laughs> it's, an example of, it's an example of Lex sticking to his guns. I mean, literally. <laughs> but, but, but I didn't mean it that way. But yes, now I do. I, that, I meant that pun. No, I didn't. But uh, he, yes, he's sticking to his message, sticking to his guns, and literally having to do it, having to set yeah. an example. Mm -hmm. and you see that right. in an extreme measure with, with mm -hmm. Demetrius Bridges' character, Xander. No, definitely. And I think we're going to see that, uh, you know, I have a feeling you know just how much more... <laughs> Uh, those decisions all these characters well, are going to have to make I'm, but I'm I, just the we're, doctor. we're starting to see we are starting to see hey shots are starting to be fired we didn't get any gunshots last episode really when you know the convenience store was robbed yeah. mm -hmm. we did today and so you know a few extra bullets we are I keep talking about it we're escalating to that oh, point yeah. at a nice pace I think that I think what I really like what you guys are doing on that show you guys really just work that pacing so we're gonna have that payoff I feel like thanks man but you're not good. Thank you. Uh oh, they're touching. Because we know they're touching. Okay. 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 I like to point oh, something out. Oh, we know sorry. he's healthy right yeah, now on the right show. <laughs> yeah, right. okay. But uh, it's yeah, we take yeah. things these sort of things for granted, don't mm -hmm. we? You know, just sitting here and chatting like this. So we, I, we've all, be I've become very paranoid. Have you got? Have you become very paranoid yes. after watching the show about uh, little things? Um, I'm always very paranoid yeah, about okay. these kinds of things. <laughs> the show can't help though. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not, because I'm sitting there and I'm like, what? How am I gonna get a hold of someone if there is a blackout? I don't even know how to do a smoke signal to save my life if I had to. I don't. I can't run fast unless there is like food at the finish line. I'll run super fast to it. Shirtless guy, maybe. Shirtless, Shirtless guy, guy, maybe. With but food. Shirtless with guy with food. food. I, you might see me run the fastest Done. I've ever run my, in my yeah, life. You will see in the Olympics this summer. You'll see me in the Olympics. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's where I'll be. I'll be doing sprints. No. Yeah, but still, don't make me run too far because there's only so much motivation. Exactly. This there's guy with so some food is gonna give me. You know, yeah. maybe a hundred know. yard sprint or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Hundred yeah. yard sprint after that. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I want me on your team. I watch your show and I think you know if you really put me there. You see those sick people coming, I feel like, you know what, I'll go Usain Bolt, I'll just run yeah. right over those containers. <laughs> I feel like, you know what, you put that kind of motivation and fear in me, I can make that jump. Absolutely, I think but everyone uh, has that fear. I mean, yeah. and, and my character as well, he's just so stressed. He has to, people are looking to him for answers of any sort. I mean, you see it in the episode, he's still yeah. investigating it. And he can't show how stressed he is. He's got all this thing. He's all of it's inside his soft interior. Yes. As I was say yes. and, um, and he just can't show because if he starts panicking, imagine if you go to your doctor and you go, "Oh, you know, I'm feeling. I've got this cold. I'm kind of feeling." And he goes, "Oh God, that's disgusting. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> gross. You can't do that." And I'm yeah. sure he feels that inside. You know, yeah. playing with the rats and experimenting. And yeah, speaking yeah. of your character, oh, yes. my favorite. Oh. The, how are your rats doing? The rats are good. I mean, do you notice how good the actors are? The rat actors. The rats. Yes, hair and makeup must be a. We're, 
there, there, on them so too. there are lots of real rats there and I'm I'm holding these real rats and Canuts obviously does this all the time my character I'm freak. I'm just going, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you can't see that. I'm sure there's a lot of outtakes. Oh, go on, go on, go on. Um, you know what? I, mean, what? <laughs> I can't. For one thing, I'm squeamish on insect yes, rats. I, I would. I saw all of you guys like it. squeaming, and I was like. So, uh, see, I don't yeah, have that. You, you know, I gotta tell. I'm sorry to tell you this, but I have to look away at certain parts of your show. The uh, special effects are screamish. amazing, aren't they? Yes, you, you guys. Yeah. You guys have one hell of a team amazing out there. Team. You guys definitely killed it. I really wanted to ask you about mm -hmm. a scene earlier, I believe, last episode, mm -hmm. where you had, or the one before, where you biopsy patient zero, oh, Saeed. Man, yes. Oh, The way that you guys drew that together, I got, that was one I had to look away, because for one thing, just the way he looked, I wanted to ask you, what was that process like? Like, was the actor who played patient zero, was that a CGI, or was he actually there and you have to work with the special effects of his <laughs> spleen. Yeah, so so we recorded about four hours of footage for that for wow. that scene, but a lot of it was too gross for, for network. <laughs> so oh. we were there, I'm in that hazmat suit, and I had to study it. I mean, we had an amazing, we talked to the CDC, and also we had an amazing med tech there, medical advisor, Jill Woodley. Hi, Jill. And um, she she advised me to watch real autopsies. Wow. And you can watch real autopsies. I think there's some on YouTube. That's super oh, cool. Oh, wow. Un unbelievably, I think there's some on YouTube, like real autopsies. So I'm watching that. I was watching them in my trailer the day, the, the day before the scene. <laughs> and I, it was, it's, I don't advise it. I don't advise it. <laughs> no. And, I'm totally um, going to do it. There's a lot of dislikes on those on those autopsy <laughs> oh, scenes, damn. including mine. But uh, <laughs> so we had to learn how to do it. And obviously, I needed to get all the procedures and know exactly what I was doing to look make it look all real, mm -hmm. obviously, because this show is about the realism of it and mm -hmm. what you'd be definitely, doing. Definitely. And um, as well as get this sort of monologue of medical terms out. Mm -hmm. uh, and you had Saeed, you had Saeed there. So they had him in, in sort of like under, a, I'm revealing the magic tricks here. So he's sitting in a sort of chair underneath so, so at this table, his his head is popping out at one end of the table, yeah. and I'm cutting his 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 his, his <laughs> this amazing prop. Like so the, that the real got. him is under. The really, the, yes, his head is prop, popping out. Oh, okay. A prop so he's body. Like, yeah, yeah. It's 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 so, so sometimes, <laughs> so sometimes I'm I'm, so, I'm sometimes I'm taking his liver out, and he's just looking at me. Going, <laughs> Why? He's doing Why are you doing this? He's just, just, just making me feel bad. Acting. Yeah, he's making me feel bad. So when the guts exploded yeah. in your face, I mean, w okay, could you do it in just one take? That's no. how I That's felt. That's how I no. reacted. We, how, we, how's the process of just, you, you know what, this is when it's going to happen, just we walk had, it through me. So we, they had to rehearse it, the spray, how to exactly angle that sort of the wow. blood spray. We did a bunch of takes spraying <laughs> that. And then every time we do the take, obviously you have to clean it you up gotta change afterwards. the whole suit, right? Oh, God. So, oh, and getting in and out of the hazmat suit is a nightmare. But this is what you know. People have to do it, and and this is it. Just it adds to the realism. It, How, the wow. way it was done is just amazing, and it just brings you into that world, and it brings the audience into that world as Definitely. well. Definitely. Yeah. Like yeah. when you got sprayed, I felt like I was getting sprayed. I was like, Good. Ah! That's that's the. Yes. I hope, I'm glad yeah. that worked. Yeah. 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 The, you know, I've said it before. The ick factor. You guys mm. always well. bring a level ten, and you know mm. what? That's really what lends it to it. Because with a dramatic show like this. If it doesn't scare you, it's not doing its job, mm. and your show does a great job of doing that for us, and I think that's why audiences are reacting so well to it. Yeah, I love the realism of it. I love the way we're exploring it, and it, the fact that it can all actually happen is the scariest thing. Yes. <laughs> <That's laughs> I'm prepared, guys. Yeah, I'm prepared. Are prepared. we prepared, though? Are we prepared? Only if there's hot guys with food yes. waiting somewhere. Oh, yes. I think that's my excuse for everything. For everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you so see what I do with on a weekly basis? <laughs> yeah, you gotta take your shirt off and bring some food. <laughs> you know, some like, food. Like yep. I said, this show, d America, this show does not get better as the clothes come off like this gentleman There's right here. There's only one way to find out. There's only one way to find out. It's not Someone on this show. Someone needs to take their clothes off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Only way to find out if it's just working or not. Look at my start. Welcome to the show, glorious. Yvette. It's nice to see you here. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Hey, How yeah. have you been today? I've been great. It's great to hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of relationships, everyone in the chat, our live chat on YouTube right now, um, okay. everyone keeps saying they want to talk about cake. Cake, yes. Cake. <laughs> so, cake. Uh, explain to those who don't know what explain, cake is. Let's explain what cake <laughs> oh, is. Like so it. cake, uh, we were watching the episode, I was live tweeting with the mm. audience, with the fans, and we all collectively came up with, um, collectively I say, <laughs> I'm kind of name. instigating it. <laughs> we came up with a shipping name, yeah, like so for cake, canuts, Jake, K 
cake. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's my new obsession. I'm not oh, going to lie. It's, it's, it's been my obsession for a while. For a while. <laughs> Gotta love cake. I mean, and tonight, I cake. mean, I think we saw a little love triangle start mm-hmm. I think tonight. We did. I think we did. I think we saw mm-hmm. it because when Canert's Katie and Jake are all in that yeah. little area talking. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. I mean, and those two just start flirting. The oh, and then I all of a sudden, I look at Canards and he's, he's giving like, this. Like, is he uh, mad? Because uh, he's on like, a third wheel now, aren't I? I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to do my thing with Katie, just I mean, chatting. Yeah. Just yeah. trying to get her her medicine. Try, trying to get her her medicine. You and then have they told talk about him the that shirt. you needed to give her a physical. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, now, now you tell me. Now you tell me. So, and then Jake just strolls in with his vest. Right. Where's my yes. shirt? Hey, he's conveniently yeah. cut off showing yeah, them. Convenient. Convenient. Yeah, conveniently. Must have done some press ups before then, you know. <laughs> Damn his muscles. But, um, <laughs> that beautiful man. Uh, and yeah, and I'm just there. And it was so funny because I remember Chris Grisma was the director there and, mm. and Michael Jones Morales was the writer. Mm. And he, I remember them saying to me, they have so much footage of me just looking really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> they could do a whole song side project of just Canis oh going, my <laughs> just looking very awkward while they're, they're doing their thing. Because yeah. the thing about Canards is from what I pick up from him is that he seems to be socially awkward mm. in a lot of, mm. like oh. with people. Like yeah. he's got a great relationship with rats maybe, but maybe with he people the like communication might not be fully there. I, so I, I, absolutely, I, I absolutely agree with you because he's, he's, again, because it comes from that stress and coming to to have to put on this sort of front that he right. knows what he's doing, but he's thrown into this baptism fire almost. He studied it. He's he's been on the field studying various virology, various viruses, but to have this scale, this magnitude in his in the in Atlanta in the U.S., it's a major. He's stuck there, ground zero with patient zero. He doesn't. He needs to figure it out as he goes along with the limited resources. So so his bedside manner is it's terrible at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> he tries, but I, he's, I think you know what. What we see subliminally, obviously, you know, I think Tiana makes a great point. His social awkwardness, Mm. that's what really comes out. But I think a lot of it comes from... There's a lot of fear in Dr. Cannard's, yeah. I feel mm-hmm. like. He's and trying you know to hide. What? Yes. He's and, not confident. And yeah. you know, it's such a subtle thing, but it's really just, you portray it just very well. I'm not just Thank saying you. that, Thanks. but I think part of it that we're starting to see, going back to the tension, how it is rising. You know, you're not hiding it as well as you did in mm-hmm. episode one. That, well, how can you? The longer yeah. it goes on, things are going to start slipping through the cracks for each character. Right. You see it with people. You see it in this episode. Definitely. Um, I have a question from the chat roll. It's okay. actually from Ooh. Janet, your wife. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Janet, hi. I've got the she, wedding ring on. <laughs> she says, does Dr. Cannots have a girlfriend? Does jo- Dr. Cannots have... Does George, I was going to say, have a girlfriend? <laughs> George has a wife. Hi, hi, Janet. How are you doing? She's, that means she's watching it in Taiwan. Oh, so wow. So we've got international... Wow. And I know people from Singapore watch it as well, so hello. Um, <laughs> Janet, hi. Does does Canets have a girlfriend? Well, we don't know that yet, do we? I mean, mm. we're on episode four. So uh, I know Janet's just smiling. Away. <laughs> she's like, uh-huh. you, you know, you know what? With Janet, Janet, you would think, because she's, she's my wife, she, she would know a lot about what's happening in the show. I didn't tell her. Anything. Oh, that would have bugged me. Yeah, I, and she wanted to know. She wanted to read some of the scripts and stuff. I did not let her see. I was so oh, wow. cautious. That would have killed me. Her, I would yeah. have been like waiting for you to be asleep, going yeah. through like scripts and yeah, she, God knows I, what. I was not letting. I hid the scripts. I did everything I could to. Wow. Uh, and whenever she came over, I, I was always just locking it up somewhere. <laughs> I'm making sure it's just locked down. So Janet. You don't yeah. know. I know you don't know. Yeah. So we'll find out, I guess. Or maybe she but, does. But real quick, maybe since she, we have Janet does. on the line, Janet, yeah. are you worried about something? <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't hey, think... By the way, thank you for watching. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think so, because the chat roll called her out pretty quick. She asked the question, like, does Dr. Cannox have a girlfriend? And two comments later, it's like, wait, Janet, aren't you his wife? <laughs> she's uh, like, I think I'm, she's like, yeah, Janet, George, George has a wife. Janet, but, Janet, Janet you Kenner's? should be worried about... Me and Jake. Yeah, so and Jake. cake is what you should oh. be cake. worried about. Yeah, everyone should be worried about cake right now. <laughs> cake, 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 cake. cake, cake. So I'm not going to have cake for you. Oh, yes, I will. will. It'll, taste <laughs> all this, it'll taste all the sweeter. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, much think better. about Jake and Cannards and just dead rats it. when you're eating yes. cake. It'll yeah. be it's great. the perfect combination. <laughs> My birthday mm. passed recently, oh. so it's a good thing. Okay. I'm not going to any parties for a while. There's now. always time for cake. Always. <laughs> always. For you, yeah. Uh-huh. Every Tuesday. Um, so on the okay. other side of this, we've got Jake and Katie who are mm. bonding 
Mm-hmm. Making their little makeshift um, hospital family, yeah. how, building how, a monopoly game together. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Makeshift. I think Casanova over there is playing a perfect game. He really I mean, is. Gratiating he's, himself with Quentin. Yeah. And he's, he's, Zach on he's a character. smart dude. He knows. He, he knows he's trying to get the ladies. It's I'll tell you that. Yeah, and especially monopoly. for someone who. Monopoly, which monopoly. I'm a huge fan of Monopoly. Oh, so now I was like, you oh. Are. Right. I've got like was. 15 different collectors. You said editions. you hated Monopoly. No, <laughs> I know, right? okay. Do you have really? Have got, yeah. Have you got the uh, the English version as well? The I UK don't. Version? Oh, I should get you that. But you I have a Harry Potter version. Here. Do you? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to go to that Harry Potter I, exhibit I, I, at some point. As well. I got the yeah, 20th yeah. anniversary <laughs> re-edition with like the gold pieces, and I, I still have to make sure I never lost the race car because that's like the first piece you lose, and it's everyone's paper. Now you're just showing off. <laughs> I just I, so yeah, the gold pieces, awesome. Man. I always it's wanted awesome. to be like the thumbnail thing. Really? I, d- I don't yeah. know. Yeah, the thumble. I don't know why. It's oh. because you love Peter Pan, probably. And that I was actually, the kiss. I do. I'm more I of a do. Beauty and the Beast fan myself. Oh, oh I see what we're doing <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I'm, that's I'm a big the, fan. I am. That's I a big am. fan of Beauty and the Beast. I am. Big, big fan. Very big fan. Um, but Jake and Katie, they're yeah. bonding. They're building Monopoly games together, which, oh my gosh, relationship goals. Uh, <laughs> how, how, how convenient. Jake that knows he all that. He knows yeah, all that. Right. Right. She's like, oh, not like a man who knows how to handle money. But I love that he actually opens up to her and says, you know, I didn't have that great of a childhood Mm -hmm. and I tend to not let people get close and as soon as it starts getting close, I I run. So he tells her, you know, we're all stuck in here together and we're getting very close. Don't let me run. That's a beautiful scene. And then when when he, they, again, they remember they can't touch and they have that little moment Mm -hmm. there touching the box and... And just that, a lot of that scene, it almost seems like it's improvised. But just just how good an actor, how good actors they are, Chris Wood, Kristen Gutowski, you know, mm-hmm. they just made it so real. That little conversation, the little laughs they do, just it, it's it was a real bonding moment, mm-hmm. and it was a very yeah. emotional moment as well. It was, and she, you know, she's been trying to get the these pills mm-hmm. that Doctor Cannerts was helping her with, and I'm then supposed to give it so, to her. Yeah, and Jake, Jake just, came along. you just yeah. dropped the ball there. I'll, I'll handle it. I'll handle it. I'll handle it, Doctor. Oh, great, thanks. Should have yeah. been like, you like, know, I'll, officer, I'll, I'll hey, handle it. I'll like, handle it. Question: You have no problem asking Jake to burn the bodies, but you can't get him burn. to handle some rats while you bring hey, her the medicine. I tried. Did you see me? I tried, tried, but I was in that room playing with the rats and um and. And Jake said, oh, don't worry, I'll do it. I said, I tried to say, look, I'll handle it. I'll, I'll be the hero here for once. No, no. Well, Jake, my, Jake my is looking for you, you my man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, I thought man. he Thanks. was trying. He like, tried, he, yeah. Yeah, no offense well. to Cannards, but Jake did, you know, go into that truck with the creepy guy with all the pills on mm. the ground and he yeah, gets, he's like one upping him yeah you know he's out there doing the brave hero stuff and you know, you, it's you, not I, hey, hey, you don't know that like he can't do no that no offense to Canada I know that's always going to be an offense to Canada <laughs> you don't know that he can't do that exactly. for we're, we're not saying that he can't I'm we're saying, just saying we're not seeing it we're not seeing it or we haven't seen it yet I'm trying to find a cure or something to slow the virus down I'm doing some I'm working that's a lot more than getting some but Canners is just that guy he's you know the best friend Who's the quiet guy who's yeah, getting like shafted by the zone. girl? It's a friend zone. It's a friend zone. It's a friend zone. Friend zone. zone. Did you, did you, did you, did you, you saw cam- that game, wasn't I you? I did. That you saw they friend zone me. Well, I'm not well, saying that the friend zone guy isn't going to win in the end yeah. because you know Jake right now is just showing off with his muscles yeah. and he's showing like off. showing up like Gaston you know like yeah. all pretty oh and gosh, gorgeous and his hair is flowing he can't and help but it but obviously <laughs> the beast is going to win the beast did you say the beast is going to win the beast is going to win the beast can the beast and that's it that's I actually pretty awesome. awesome. I, like, I will, might try it. In the next episode, you might <laughs> see on my badge, my <laughs> name tag. Like oh, this whole thing just says the Beast. Just a nickname just I have on the basketball court. It's <laughs> <laughs> called me the Beast. Yeah. When we play shirts that, versus skins. That's skin. what Michael Jordan called me back in the 90s. Yeah, back in the 90s. Yeah. Back in the 90s. Yeah. But I, you mentioned that scene where, where Jake goes into the, the truck mm-hmm. and he's looking for medication and everything. Um, the list that Canets gives him as well. I did like, I love that the, because I'm a fan of the show as well. <laughs> so I loved um, the, the body so. there. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah, I am. I, but I watch it as well. We all mm-hmm. gather and we'll talk about right. that more. But um, when he sees that body, it's almost like a zombie like body there. So yeah. you, you, it, it, but you see then you see the syringe in his arm and it it just brings it back instantly brings it back to reality that they they talk about tweakers they talk about drug mm-hmm. abuse they talk even medication mm-hmm. and what Katie's going through but but here there's someone who's abusing drugs 
and you see that in a real life situation there are the that sort of catatonic zombie state it can actually happen you don't oh. have to have zombies in real life you you have we there's so many real yeah. dangers and real fears yeah. right. that happen and and we explore that in the show and i just and that little scene just in that little in that truck explored it you know briefly there mm -hmm. um, but i love that and I, w I was really mad at Jake because, you know, I know there was a chain mm -hmm. on the door, but I wanted him to break right. the chain yeah. and actually open the oh, door. Before say, I saw you, you were like physically in. I was like, no, open no, door. open, open it. it all the way. Yeah. Why is it only halfway? All I could envision was, you know, either someone being in there and, you know, infecting him or someone on the outside being like a cop. Boom, Shut shutting it. it on him. And I'm just like, no, don't do Put it. Put himself in a lot of danger. Yeah. 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 But, you know, he did it for the drugs. For cake. Yeah, for cake. For cake. <laughs> he did it for cake. And it worked out for them. So <laughs> um, Katie's got her medicine, which keeps her mentally stable, stable yeah. and balanced. It's the chemical, like, imbalance. It yeah. keeps it at the right. So I love that we're getting more yeah. and more information about her and her relationship with Quentin's dad. And I actually mm -hmm. like that they're actually touching on... Well, I, I don't know if I can even say it. So for the next episode, I think the fact that they're going to be touching on what she has is actually another mm -hmm. thing that I think is really nice that they're focusing on, that mm -hmm. you yes. don't see a lot of people talk about it because there's such a stigma With around it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nobody's perfect, and we all have our crosses to bear. You know, right. Jake says that, but the nobody's perfect thing, we, it can maybe some of the audience have certain things you're know, going on with that and they can relate to certain characters for certain things they have and again that's just a, a it's a fantastic writing it's how they explore it it's yeah that's a very valid point yeah well. yeah um so i want to quickly talk about the other people who are still stuck inside this cordon mm -hmm. we've got Jana and her team Jana, we talked about earlier for a little bit you know she's building this phone so that she can get more information but while she's building it you know first dennis and tony see you know tweakers in the garage running around and so i'm like oh crap you know they about to get raided and then she goes on the roof and the building and maintenance guy is up there sam sam yeah and sean parsons yeah yeah and i feel so bad for him he's just living on the roof like yeah. trying to you know stay safe and you know, they're both got their guards up and their right. mask on yeah. at first. And then, you know, he's like, oh, well, do you guys have room for me? And she's like, I can't. It's like, Jesus getting turned away. I was away. about to say, like, Jesus, I like, know. Jesus, like, no, 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 That's exactly what I thought when I saw that. I was That's like, interesting. no you room for you. Go to the next yeah. table. Yeah, yeah no like, room oh. in the inn. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No room but in the inn. So, see, Jana has some tough calls to make. You see it in episode three when he, when they quarant when she quarantines uh, Which uh, I Dennis totally and Tony. Her on yeah. That. Mm. So, but it's a really tough call. They're yeah. friends. You're talking to your friends here. Imagine you had to do that to us. Imagine yeah. you had to quarantine us. Yeah. Yvette looked at me right yeah, Yvette said you're the first like, to go. Well, I have no problem. <laughs> yeah. I got no problem quarantining people. There you go. People. But you have to be tough. And Jana and Christina Moses' character has <laughs> has to be so tough, including with Sam on the yeah. roof. Exactly. You, you see like, his bed. Yeah. The camera mm -hmm. it shows his bed just in frame. I think. Well, also, I think in situations like that, what what they're showing a lot is that a lot of these people have strong personalities, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are not gonna budge. Because they know it's such a, you know... Tense situation. It's such a tense, situ tense situation. But what I think is going to happen is they're gonna be, there is going to be that one softy, and then that's when all hell is going to break loose. That's the domino. Why did you look at me? I don't know. I was thinking of a lot of things. <laughs> okay, soft okay. interior. Yeah, yeah. soft interior. Soft we all have soft interiors. You know. And rock hard exteriors. Um, rock hard. Someone that I really want us to be to talk about, and I'm glad that you're here, you... You guys mentioned the CDC was brought in to make you make it look as real as possible, mm -hmm. real to life, to really bring that authenticness to the show. A character that is really, I feel, inspired by this. That, sadly, we didn't see this episode, Sabine Lammers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have this conversation a lot each week. You know, is Sabine a bad, like, malicious character, mm -hmm. or is she simply the person brought in to make the tough calls that need to be made? Having been through this process and learning what you have, where do you stand on Sabine as we know where she's at right now yeah. in the show? Yeah, as we know, I mean, you were just dissing her through each episode, though. I thought that's all <laughs> you're doing. But no, but no, but I know, I see what you're doing here. I see what you're doing here, though. I see. But, um, you know, just yeah. so you know, you're my favorite male oh, character until, oh, two yeah, seconds until ago. just now. Officer thanks. Jake, you're my favorite character on Containment. <laughs> Chris, you keep doing a great job. You're my favorite, too, Chris. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so, yes, okay. Um, so, both me and 
and Claudia, we both had discussions with the CDC right from the start. Before we filmed the pilot, we had meetings with advisors from the CDC to check on protocol and right. what happens there. And so Claudia, Claudia's character, Lomas, she knows the protocol. And she again, she has to make very tough calls in right. those situations. Mm -hmm. Not everyone can be Mr. Nice Guy or Ms. Nice Guy. Like you said, you, you have mm -hmm. to be tough um, right. when you can. And maybe she's maybe she's terrified inside but you again you're in a position of power you're the person on the outside who has to right. disseminate the information mm -hmm. that Canets gives her and you you have to make tough she's talking to the president as well you know she's got tough things to do she's got a lot of things on her mind and she has to deal with it in her way but we all studied the sort of the protocol of it and it's all as real as we can do in the show mm -hmm. and so it, it it was a lot of it was a lot of homework for that okay. and uh, so Lomas is, is close to what you can get in that situation okay yeah oh. Um, and okay. lastly, before we have to wrap up, sadly, um, really? I want to talk about, I know, doesn't it, does time just it fly does, by? Yeah. We're going to do yeah. another hour, folks. <laughs> yeah, one more hour. One more hour. Let's one keep it going. Hour. Let's keep it going. <laughs> um, so we have this new gang that's arrived mm -hmm. now um, mm -hmm. okay. at Teresa and her mom's store. Oh, yes. yes. Um, so first of all, Xander does get into the um, Corden and mm -hmm. he delivers messages and tells um, Lex that, you know, sadly his friends who were his informants, I'm sorry, Leo, um, that his informants are, yeah. are Leo dead. Leo Green made me cry in this episode. Trevor, Trevor St. John, who plays Leo mm -hmm. Green, he made me cry in this episode. I was, it's a very, I love that scene. Like, that's when I was, sees, yeah. really was like, oh man, Leo, yeah. crap, yeah. you got me wrapped around your yeah. finger yeah. again. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> <laughs> by the time Xander makes it to Teresa, her and her mom are First, they're being held up by the same hillbillies from yeah, last week, yeah. and then those guys get outdone by the gang that comes yeah, through, the and they're like, "This is my another store." Another gang with Trey. It's I think it's, it's Trey, yeah, Trey, Michael Shannon uh, Jenkins, a very enigmatic uh, mm -hmm. actor, and he plays Trey so well. And it's yeah, like you said, this is a new gang. They seem to have principles. They're talking about four to six feet young blood to Demetrius' yeah. character yeah. when they tr when Zander and Teresa try and get together. He doesn't like the fact the other gang was playing was trying to being perverted yeah, to, they to seem more, Teresa. They seem yeah. more. I have a feeling someone in there was probably someone of former power or something that or has a little more insight thought, than everybody I, else I, does. I, I so got I the got, feeling. Oh, go ahead. I, that, like that's the feeling I got. Like th not. Yeah, I, I so got the feeling wars, it was a Yeah, I mm. got the feeling it was more about a territorial thing. Like you know what, they understand that hey, it, we're not. They understand that they can't go into chaos because then everyone's gonna kill each other mm. if they just start shooting. Hey, you're too close into my turf. But I feel like what they're gonna explore maybe is like hey. Who's willing to stand their ground and say, you know, this is mine? Well, he shot someone's hand. He yeah. shot one of the yeah. gang leaders' hands. Hand. Yeah. Really close to Teresa. It was pretty dangerous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dangerous. that bullet could have gone through and through, right? Yeah. To right. her. But and that's where he must have had some training. Oh, <laughs> oh exactly. Because that was a pretty accurate shot. Well, I the interpreted cavalry. this a little mm -hmm. different than I think both mm -hmm. of you. I thought okay. maybe. Um, Xander called in for some reinforcements because there's a reason why Teresa's mom doesn't want Teresa hanging out with him and we still don't really oh. know the root of oh. that I love, okay. it. I, I love how well there. I love how well you look into it all of you just look into this show yeah. it's great it can, everyone has their theories and the audience as well that. yeah so now I that felt like that, it, it was like a Xander she thing because she's like well <laughs> Teresa saying, you know, it took both of us to make this baby, but the mom clearly has something against him. She has something Andrew. against him. Clearly. Clearly. And clearly it could have has. been a former life of his that he's gotten out of. Or mm -hmm. We don't know the situation, but I just felt like it felt like something maybe Xander was yeah. involved in. Okay. I guess we'll find out. I we guess we'll find the characters out. characters are e getting deeper into the each yeah, character's history. Yeah, you won't history. just tell us. Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you, you as soon as, <laughs> soon as we... As soon as we cut, I'll tell you everything. Now. Um, well, let's get into some predictions about mm -hmm. what we think is going to happen. Can't wait to hear what George has to know, say. Okay. <laughs> You're after Buzz TV. Predictions. Hmm. Um, sorry, I'm just reading through it's the like chat. We'll see if there's any. Yeah, I know the, the strobe lights. Like, yeah. This is where I finally get abducted. They finally came for me. <laughs> when I heard name? that, I got a little panicky inside. That's yeah. like my fear. Yeah. <laughs> like aliens. So I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Who wants to My start? fear is mostly what's happening on this show. Yeah, yeah, because the, the real fear is, yeah, <laughs> the, the things most likely to happen. 
Hmm. Well, maybe okay. Aegon's as well. Who knows? You, uh, you want me to start? I think you should. I'm looking at you because I feel like you already have a prediction. You know, I always have a prediction. I actually predict that. Um, I predict it's about time one of our main characters might get sick. Mm. And you know, why do you even say that? Because uh, if why? one of you, if because if all of you were healthy, it would be no fun. Don't say it. Don't, don't, don't I, I, wish I, it I, on I anyone. I predict it's not gonna be Doctor Cannert. Uh, you're just saying that because I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I know your game. <laughs> He you sucks know, up to know. whoever's here. You know what? No, actually, you, personally, I'm hoping that you get sick and then Jake has to take you out to protect Katie and boom. Oh, pers- personally, I'm hoping wow. Claudia Black comes to the show as well. After we go I am too. She's like, I'm going to put in a Claudia, gonna, yeah, yeah, gonna, here. Claudia, he can step aside. Your invitation right here. You so want to come so next smooth. week? You got it. Well, see, and my fear for my prediction area is that I think Cannerts is the one who could be infected first just because he's dealing with the virus so much that, and I don't want him to get sick, but mm. it scares me that he's, you know, with the rats and trying to come up with different And if he goes, we'll figure stuff. it out. Yeah. Exactly. There's, but there's absolutely a danger there. Yeah. I, I, actually, I don't think that he's going to be the first one to get infected. I will say that. Um, I, there, he's too major mm-hmm. of a character. For them to do that so quickly. Now, what I do think is, I think Jake is actually gonna. Why'd you look at me when you said Jake? Because <laughs> I think he's just gonna get the ball rolling, and I think we're actually gonna see our first kiss. Mm-hmm. We need some. Well, Jake, Jake, Jake and Kenneth here. really haven't talked enough though, for the first <laughs> kiss to happen. But I guess I mean maybe one more episode of. I chat. think we're gonna see our first little uh, glimmer of. Romance Kate? between yeah. mm-hmm. Kate and Jake, uh, and then right, right. he's gonna be like in the background, really sad. Up. You know how all you of know, the awkward yes. scenes that they said that he has, he's gonna be there like. I think we're just gonna see him with this rat, with this rat, with this rat. You're like, oh, Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never look at that movie the same again. Now, oh, little rat. Oh man, I could see that happening. So, other predictions. I'm trying to think of. I don't. I don't want any of our main cast to get sick or to die. But I feel like on a show like this, it's yeah. inevitable. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, then on another note, I think that next episode, Lex is gonna finally flip on Sabine a bit, and he's gonna have to face the consequent oh. yeah, consequences. Well, he is losing. He's losing his temper a lot. You see yeah. in this yeah. episode. Like, I think we're to, gonna see yeah. someone finally like just flip it, like flip the script. Like they're just gonna go crazy. Like this is gonna be the episode where you see someone lose all composure and they're gonna go completely like they're not gonna hold it in they're just whatever happens happens it's gonna have to be a really stressed character who's under has a lot of very (laughs) porn who do we know who's like Uh, that on the show no idea no idea no one (laughs) It's got to no get one. shirtless as well. <laughs> He's got to get shirtless as well. <laughs> we, we don't know what Dr. Kennett is With hiding food. under his lap. Yeah, we don't know what's under the lap. Only, only Janet knows. Only Janet knows. Janet knows. Janet knows. Janet knows. Janet knows. Janet. I'll show you. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the cure is skin to skin contact. Maybe that's what Tannis will come up with. Yes. yes. Katie. No, the cure is skin to skin contact. We have to kiss now. <laughs> not Jake. I tried it with the rats. Not Jake the rats. I tried it with the rats. It works. Exactly. Oh my god. I've been practicing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love's true kiss will kill. <laughs> and we just turned the show into a Disney movie. Really beautiful. Oh beautiful, theories. beautiful theories. Julie is listening, I hope. Judy Fleck. Oh Julie, if you need us for season two, we've got Gorgeous. lots of ideas. Here. Love's yeah. true kiss. <laughs> Love's true kiss. Well, thank you so much for joining us thank today. You. Thank you for having me. It's time. awesome. It's great fun. Um, yes, I hope you come back to see us soon. I'd love to, I especially hope. when Claudia Black comes. Yeah. Oh, uh, Claudia, I'm ready. I'm <laughs> ready. But yeah, oh, I don't think you're ready. I don't think you're ready for Claudia. <laughs> I don't, I don't right. think so. No. She's gonna come. Good With blazing. The yeah. Um, so in the meantime, thank you guys at home for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you leave a comment below, like us. If you're listening on iTunes, give us five stars. We are a new show, so any love that we can get is very helpful. Um, where can the fans find you guys on social media to talk to you? And Just use Gabriel's tweet. Definitely. You guys could find me all the time to talk containment, canards, cake, cake. Claudia Black, and <laughs> Sabine Lomers. Exactly. Always double G on TV. Me, just that tweet from George for Twitter and Insta, Georgie Instagram, and George Young Online on Facebook. And mine is sports in sass. 
N, like the N and SAS with three S's. Wow. Don't confuse that with anything else because I've had that name confused very many of times. <laughs> oh, I wonder why. Well, mine is at the Tiana Hobson on Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you guys check out all the shows that AfterBuzz TV brings to you every week. There's so many shows. We have a brand new website, AfterBuzzTV.com. We're new on Snapchat. Um, and I think our name is just AfterBuzz TV. <laughs> We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all over social media. So make sure you guys give us some love. And thank you for watching. And we'll be back next week with another special guest. But I'm not going to tell you who. <gasps> <Ooh. laughs> One of the rats. One of the rats. One of the rats. Rats, 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 Thank you, guys. Have a Bye. good night. Bye, guys. Mwah. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.